On today's show, we're talking to all you triathletes out there, runners, swimmers, bikers, find out how to get protected. We're on location with Todd Greenwood from the ever-popular Competitive Edge, and he's going to teach us how to protect ourselves when we're out in the elements doing what we love most. And also, get tech lips. Well, I like my bump. Find out what I'm talking about when we come back. So stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss this. Welcome back. Well, another great show in store for you guys today. Mm -hmm. Here, we're on location at Competitive Edge. Doesn't look like a normal set. No, <laughs> it's actually nice being out. It is. <laughs> the it change is. of scenery for a little bit. Um, but before we have the honor of speaking with Todd Greenwood, the manager here at Competitive Edge, um, we actually have um, some great books. books that you know we have come across and have mm -hmm. been very compelled and uh, motivated by that mm -hmm. we want to share with you. Uh, one is A Pale Girl Speaks, and I know, mm -hmm. Megan, you had read that. Yes. I had not got through the whole thing of it yet because I was reading another book right. um, that we'll talk about <laughs> in a second. But what was your take on Pale Girl Speaks? Who wrote it? Why did she write it? Right. It, it was written by a, a young lady named Hillary, and it really struck me because obviously it's a first-hand account of her experience with melanoma, so something that I could relate to. Yeah. Unfortunately. In more, you know, more ways than one. And um, this excerpt that she, you know, that I have here in front of me, she's talking about the, the diagnosis and the word cancer and how scary it is. And I just wanted to read this, this line because it reminds me so much of my mother. Mom is right outside the front door. I can hear her panting, her body ready and in wait. A bundle of raw nerves set to burst the moment her size five and a half feet hit my recently swiffered hardwood floors. Mm -hmm. So all I could think of is when I was diagnosed and my mother's reaction and the, you know, just a bundle of nerves is a great way to describe how your parents feel when they hear that their son or daughter has cancer. Now, and is it so, something that you shared with your parents when you were... Yeah, I mean, it was when I, after my initial diagnosis, I actually, you know, left the doctor's office and called my parents, my mother was the first phone call that I made. And, you know, I called her and was... I, I can't even remember if I was crying because I might have been so in shock yeah. that it just so wasn't taken back. Like okay, I just heard. I just heard. Yeah. Right. And so it was, you know, just a horrible conversation because she wasn't even around. She was on, on the Cape, and so she couldn't, you know, come yeah. home. I'll hug yeah. you. You know, it was yeah. kind of like, okay, we'll come home as soon as we can. Like yeah. we're we're packing up. We're gonna get yeah. in the car now. So it was a, you know, an awful experience not only to be diagnosed, but then to, uh, to have a parent, oh. you know, to hear that your son or daughter think, has yeah. cancer. It's just, so this book was, you know, it's her first hand account of her diagnosis with melanoma and her experience. And so and it was, how did, do you know how it concluded? Like obviously she's alive in order to be able to write exactly. the book and share her experiences and right. she's able to survive from it and, you know, share with others. It's almost like, right. remember that show, I don't think it's on the air anymore, um, The C Word. Yes. Yes. That, with Laura Linney. Yes. Yes. Yep. And that's almost like the same thing, only giving you a visual of what people to go right. through. And as sad as it is, honestly, I think, because um, our biggest thing is education and mm -hmm. our biggest thing is getting the voice out there about how this disease impacts people, but right. how it doesn't have to be so impactful. Right. Because the, we, the, you know, you can decrease uh, the statistics of the numbers of people Absolutely. dying by education. So here it's, you know, it's just somebody speaking step by step and, and living it, letting people like myself who wasn't personally affected with it. Right really get the inside look of the pain and the suffering uh, and the scare and mm -hmm. every kind of emotion that it goes through. So in the first parts that I was reading, mm -hmm. it does. It just makes you so, right. like, oh, my God, almost makes you feel like you're going through it yourself. Right, and I love how she says, he's on his way, she's on her way, the whole effing world is on their way to my house and I have cancer. It, it, that's what it is, you know. People yeah. come together and when you, they hear news like this, and it's almost, you know, you know people mean, are well-intentioned, are well -intentioned, they mean well, but it's overwhelming. Sometimes you need a moment by yourself to digest the diagnosis before you can sort of accepting the comfort. Soak in the reality right. of like, okay, this is what I have. Now how do I deal with it? Exactly. Yeah. You know, so like I'm gonna con my is, whole thing is like, I, I want to conquer it. Right. But there are people who do take it the other who way need a and minute. just sort of <laughs> want a minute and say like, oh my god, I'm gonna die. Right. So we want to get those people out of that. Yeah. 
So there was another book that you had mentioned, Daddy's Promise, that you had wanted to talk about. Yeah, yeah. This what was um, that about? It was by Brendan T. Hoffman. Mm -hmm. And he's not like a, you know, writer or anything, right. but he's just, he's a father. Let's say just a father. He is, you know, a very uh, heartwarming, giving man. When um, his daughter, uh, at 28 years old, was diagnosed with stage 3 melanoma, oh, wow. um, it... Me, uh, me, what is it? Me, metastasized? Metastasized, yes, thank you. Mm. Um, into her brain. Oh my gosh. So he spent 24 hours a day, seven days a week, with her by her side for 10 months. I mean, what parents oh wouldn't go over and beyond? And I know a lot of people who are watching this right now may be thinking, oh my God, I know somebody, whether it's, you know, cancer or melanoma right. or something else. You know, you're going through it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so he, he, they talked about everything under the sun. And the book that he wrote was like a, a twofold thing. It was a step by step, you know, story, mm -hmm. letting people know and giving them an insight to his day to day dealings with the most, you know, per, the most special person in his life right. um, on a day to day basis and how she was dealing with cancer and the treatments and all that. But then on the same token, him dealing with her passing. Wow. You know, and having to bury your daughter oh at God. such a young age. Whether, you know, at any point, burying your child burying is a horrible child, thing. Right. But, um, <clears throat> and then promises that he had made to her, you know, during this whole ordeal. Oh and that wow. he felt it was, you know, his way of healing and his way of, you know, her looking down upon him. Right. Know, as kind of letting it go. Yeah. yeah. So this, you know, father is just a very compelling story. And mm. he did write another book after that. And it's funny because he does go on to say that he's like, I never thought I'd be an be author. A writer. I never thought I'd be a writer. But it's amazing what emotions and personal trauma, mm -hmm. you know, that that you go through right. that compels you to do something. I'm sure something. this was like therapeutic to him Oh, very as well. therapeutic. And not only to him, but to so many people. Mm -hmm. He's gotten emails, he's gotten calls from people that this book has been such a healing for them. Sure. So with that, he did write another book. I can't think of it off the top of my head, but um, you know, you can go on and Google Daddy's Promise and mm -hmm. it'll give you the list of things that all he's done and accomplished. But there is something that he said that, that all loss is hard. Um, all loss is lonely. But there is something about the loss of a child that puts it in a unique category, mm -hmm. you know. And no, I, obviously, mm -hmm. I don't th I wish I ever it could express that or have that feeling. Right. But um, I do sympathize for everybody out there who's lost a loved one, who's lost a child. So please check these books out. I think mm -hmm. you'll find it very therapeutic yourself. And you know, just you know, applause to the people mm -hmm. who had the strength Willing to share to deal stories. with it and to share it. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Public, very public. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned. We're going to be meeting with Todd Greenwood from Competitive Edge coming up next. Well, welcome back. We have Todd Greenwood with us today from Competitive Edge. Thank you so much okay. for not only being here, but for allowing you to yeah, open up yeah. your space to us. This is it's look great to get, out, get out of our little studio once in a while and be in the real world and, and see, you know, what you have going on here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, what uh, the importance of, of even being here is because of the fact that you know, I'm, I like to say I'm a triathlete. I do triathletes. I run. I'm getting more into it, not like the ones that you know and, and what you're involved with. But it's, to me, the most important 
to get in touch with these runners and mm -hmm. these triathletes who are in the elements literally 20 hours right. out of a day. Out of a 24 hour day, they are out training, training. Five o'clock in the morning until eight o'clock at night. And a lot of them, you know, are out when it's dark. Right. You know, then they come into a building, you know, doing their work. Then they go out during lunch. Then they come back into the intermission of the sun mm -hmm. and the different types of elements that they're faced with the early sun, the late sun. Right. You know, it's crazy. Does it seem like something that, you know, runners are even concerned about when they come in here? Is that even Because you question? see, like, the raccoon right. face, and they're really, really red, and you can see where they uh, may not have had well protection. Right. You know, because I've gone to Lake yeah. Placid, and you see, you know, and I've gone to New York City Marathon, and you see thousands and Burns. thousands of this. Yeah. Yeah. So. I think people have become, uh, definitely has have identified more, um, you know, with protection, um, being out there in the elements. Um, you know, when you're outside training and, and being active for long periods of time, you know, you're exposing yourself to, you know, the sun. And it's to me, it's like it's not the first thing that maybe they're thinking of. They're thinking of, i got to get my, you know, 10 time, miles in. Right. i got to get my this. And, my, you know, is it something that you think is the first thing that they're thinking about? It's not at the forefront of no. their thinking and, and what they, um, you know, their immediate needs are and, and what they're after. And, they're, and most people are um, in a time crunch and they're trying to achieve certain goals in a very short period of time. Mm -hmm. Um, so to achieve those goals, they're going to sacrifice certain things, and those things might be some things that are very important that are being overlooked, mm -hmm. like you know skin protection and things that could be used to help them protect from. Is anything. it something? No, I'm sorry. Is yeah. it something that your staff now is kind of realizing? Oh, we should mention the UV protecting clothes or sunblock. Is it something that you know? I think it, we everybody's become more aware of it. Right. You know, obviously, at, you know, one point or another, people do get impacted or affected by. Um, you know, melanoma, mm -hmm. and I think what um, more people have become aware of is, is wh especially with the staff here in the shops, is that there are more products that are now being developed to help prevent and protect right. people from UV rays. Yeah, yeah you see. have some here. Um, yeah. What's, yep. What are these white, what are these arm guards? Um, for example, for, uh, for many cyclists, they're out there for long periods of time riding on their bikes, and, and you know, a lot of cyclists will get out there and they'll go and they'll ride for you know, a good 40, 50, 60, 70, 100 mile rides over the course of a, you know, five, six hour period. Mm -hmm. And, you know, during the hot summer days, you know, you're getting, you know, the sunlight speeding down on you. And there are now UV fabrics that can be introduced and used as um, protectants. And a lot of people think about wearing these Just sleeves <laughs> during a period of, uh, you know, 90 degree temperatures out there during the course of the day. Right. Um, but these have become so popular with so many cyclists because yeah. it, you know, when you're riding your bike, you're in a particular position and you're in that position for four, five, six hours. Right. And you're going to get, you know, obviously, you know, the, the sun exposure. So this is nice and light, though. It yeah. feels like it, and it it's would white. let air flow. Yeah. And yeah. So it's not like a dark white. color, like, you know, yeah. that, yeah, because I know there's a lot of black jackets. Right. Yeah. You know, uh, the cyclonauts have that black and yellow kind of thing. So mm -hmm. definitely something light repels yep. yeah. the sun. So this is something that's easy, and it doesn't involve having to do the application of sunscreen. So exactly. Really and you don't good. want to wear obviously because I'm thinking, well, why don't they just wear it? you know, zip-up kind yeah. of thing, but Hot not sometimes. in the summertime, yeah. yeah. A lot of what people are concerned about with a lot of the, um, you know, applicants that can be applied to the skin to protect you from a lot of that ultraviolet stuff is that that stuff is water-soluble. That mm -hmm. stuff, w over the time of, you know, yeah, perspiring and, and, and working out, that a lot of that stuff will have to be reapplied or it will wear off and right. it will get into, you know, your eyes and cause irritation to the skin. Exactly. Um, and they're not going to stop or have time as they're obviously right. riding. The yeah, skin so to put something on that's going to protect you and it's something that's going to actually absorb moisture, keep you dry, keep yeah. you cool, and keep you protected from the sun. Uh, these are a neat uh, item from a company called Pearl sun Zumi sleeves. called sun, sun sleeves. sleeves. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Now, what are some of the other items you have? I see there's chapstick as usual. There's yeah, um, there's a lot of chapsticks that can be used and sunscreens that can be used to help with protection. Mm -hmm. um, there's also uh, an anti-chafe cream that mm. is used quite frequently for many athletes. Um, you know, and this is something that provides UV protection as well. Oh, see, great. Um, never, never. Because no. yep. I know, I've not personally used the oh, yeah, chapstick, yeah. but I know a lot of, you know, men, you know, who've used it. Yep. And never, you know, has it ever uh, even thought that it would be... Yeah. You know, an yep. SPF protection. That's yep. nice because then it's not a second application. They don't have to worry about doing yeah. multiple applications. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what about these helmets that you have here? Now, there are some other things that, you know, we're getting into the, Putting you know, cooler on. months. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> there are a lot of products in the wintertime. And, and as we were talking about cycling and, and yeah. you know, tri triathlons and 
um, you know, being outdoors during those periods of time, um, you know, being active. Um, you know, we're now moving towards, you know, winter months where, um, you know, we have a lot of athletes that are now getting outside doing other things. Um, and uh, the daylight is not as long, but at certain points of the year, just as strong. Right. And the sun. Especially with the snow. Right. I think reflects on the, right. yep. on the snow. Yep. Now, what would this be used for? Would it just be for snowboarding, or is this like a something that somebody would wear riding a bike, or is it just like basically for snowboarding? This, is a, this would be used for winter sports applications only, so it would be a okay. ski or snowboard helmet. Mm -hmm. um, and these helmets would be, would be applied um, for protection. Um, oh, first that? and foremost is that they're going to be used for, you know, protection and keeping you safe on the mountain, but they are also going to provide flexible. you <laughs> UV protection as well. Awesome too. Oh, yeah, super right. cool. Doesn't look right with my <laughs> but, you know, and that's the thing, I see that, um, oh, uh, that commercial where it's like, oh, just yeah, have, she's just not have a bad hair. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I worked years ago for an eyeglass company. And you, I don't know if you could tell from the camera that it almost looks like a rainbow yeah. mm. on the, I don't know if that one has it yes. yeah. as well. But isn't that the special coating polarized. that's the polarized that's on the glasses that sort of helps prevent, you know, sunblock? Well, there's, there's a couple of things to understand. There's, there's polarization on, on glasses that will really improve visibility. And then there's UV protection that can be used on, you know, glasses or goggles. And there's a couple different types. There's UVA and UVB protection on certain, you know, optics. And the, a lot of these goggles now are being introduced with these protections so that you can protect from ultraviolet rays. Yeah. Um, and uh, same thing with uh, sunglasses. Um, you know, these sunglasses are polarized, but also they're going to have the UVA and UVB protectants that will keep your eyes safe from those ultraviolet rays. And Because uh, you can get melanoma in your eyes. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. Which is so scary. Which, again, a lot of people don't realize. And it, we don't want people to feel like they have to live in a bubble. We just want people to be more conscientious. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> right? Uh, we want people to be more conscientious of, of what they do and how to protect themselves. Mm. Like runners. Again, I'm a runner, so I'm more conscientious, I think, over the past couple of years of what I eat yeah. than right. I did years ago. Right. Yeah. So it's that type of thinking where it's like, hmm, I'm going to be out in the sun for the next 10 hours. You know, okay, so let me make sure that, you know, what Got I'm my wearing guards, is the SPF. Right. You know, yep. let me make sure that I'm wearing glasses that have that protection. Let me make sure I have chapstick that I could easily put on, you know, because they could do that. I know yeah. I've done that you know, while they're running that has that extra protection. Mm. The more that you protect, the better that it is, yeah. you know, um, for, you know, for your skin, for your future, yeah. you know, and all that. Yeah. So it doesn't seem like you're getting a lot of exposure, but it builds up over time. Yeah, so. it does. Yeah, and that the length amount of time that, that people are out there. Right. Now, something like this is uh, what I meant to ask before. Obviously, it's held up because they'll be sweating. Is it, um, you know, like the shirts that are water repellent, like it won't soak? Like, will they get wet? No, a lot of these fabrics are designed to have this moisture wicking um, property okay. to it. So, so, it, so it what it will do is it will allow that moisture to dry very quickly. So it gets into the fabrics, and the fabrics dry very quickly. So okay. they're okay. designed dry. to stay dry and dry quickly and, um, you know, prevent you from getting, you know, damp and, and mm. overheating because uh, moisture does cause overheating as yeah. well. Now, all of these um, products will be able to, if people at home maybe can't get to your location, because I know you have three, right? Yep. Three locations. We have a location here in East Longmeadow. Okay. Um, we're also um, in Holyoke on Route 5, and okay. we have a couple of snowboard shops as well, one in East Hampton, oh. as well as uh, one here in East Longmeadow. And now, if they wanted to purchase an item that maybe they've seen on our show today, could they go to your website? You could visit us at our website, it? absolutely. Okay. Um, you know, uh, we, we are at competitiveedgeskiandbike.com, and um, you could visit us there. Um, if you don't make it down to the shops and, um, you know, can always give us a call the old-fashioned way and, and, and just inquire. See, and we can help you out. I like. I know. You know, I came from, you know, Long Island, New York, so it's just a small town. I mean, I remember not dating myself, mm -hmm. but I remember <laughs> going to the, uh, like, the local Lois and Clark, a local yeah. CBS, you know, if you will, and being, oh, I'm going to take, you know, this chapstick and this and, you know, put it on a charge, and there's something to go. Yeah. You know, yeah. but. Not you anymore. Know, no, yeah. but it's still nice to know yeah. that you have that. You're very personable. Yeah. Your staff here are always very knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. You really um, go 150% 
full forward when it comes to supporting our causes and our organization. Um, you know, we're very grateful to Competitive Edge for the donations that you have provided to us, you know, for the triathlon that we did right. in, you know, Chicopee. And that's what's getting me more and more educated. The more that I get involved with it, the more that I do it. And that's why reaching out to you, I wanted that education to be out to our audience. Yeah. You know, because there are so many runners and bikers right, if and you're trying to be snowboarders fit, and yeah it's all or, about healthy lifestyle. yeah i mean yeah. do you do anything even with golf i mean is it no, that's no a big one. We, we don't do anything with golf but um you know like i said a lot of our customers that we see that come through our shops are, are active lifestyle people right. they are they are golfing they're swimming they're running they're yeah. biking they're skiing so they're nice snowboarding to see more of that. yeah right. and and that's what we we see a lot of people um, definitely in the past few years gravitating towards um, is ways to to get out there and enjoy the outdoors and and, and you know provide a healthy lifestyle doing that yeah so yeah. well and thank that's, you that's what's the importance this of that great people know mm -hmm. what they can choose in the store well let me choose this because this has you know better right. protection yeah. or let me go with this because you know that'll help me in the long run yeah kind of thing, so. and we have a great staff here and everybody that in, in all of our shops are really you know they they they're here because they love the the industries and the sports that we that we're involved with and, and everybody's pretty active in those sports and right. um, if we if we don't know or haven't quite figured it out yet we are very quickly developing those things and figuring them out and and I want to say that the majority of our, our employees are probably at the forefront of figuring out what's the next newest neatest products to bring into the shops and and provide for our customers and I can and vouch okay. for that because I've come here you know for different things you know over the years and, and things like that and family and friends yeah. come here too and we've actually you know would go to places that were closer to our home but drive you know here because of that right. because it's like wow you know they go um, above and there's a problem with steve's bike yeah. and the wheel was like and bounce. i was like well he just got it tuned <laughs> at this you know other shop <laughs> that we were going to yeah. so it was nice to 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 know that you know the people here do know what they're talking about and if they don't know the answer they're like listen hey you know i want to research and get back to you kind yeah. of thing and that's that's what we need nowadays you right know, all that that we've been going through with the storms and the tornadoes mm -hmm. and all this other stuff. It's nice to know that there's a home base, there's people that do care, right. that one-on-one -on -one feeling instead of everything being online and texting right. and so distant, you know, from today's world. So, yeah. you know, we really do appreciate, you know, your effort and your knowledge and your support. And d what else does Competitive Edge do? I mean, do you do, you do I think in the summertime, don't you organize, like, even races? Yeah, yeah, no, we've, we've... It's not just, like, a friendly, no, great little atmosphere coming to help you with your... We've Me. really, the past few years, really have tried to develop more of a, a culture in our shops and in our stores and, and um, give back more to the community in doing things, whether it be supporting, you know, great causes like yours or, um, you know, we've developed a cycling club and we provide, mm -hmm. um, you know, cycling activities for a lot of people. They come out, we, we ride as groups and we teach people um, that are maybe um, less familiar with cycling in groups and mm -hmm. cycling out on the road and teach them some of the rules to, um, you know, just abide by and get them comfortable riding um, right. their bikes. Um, and the main rule? Yeah. Stay protected yeah. <laughs> from the sun. Exactly. But no, so, yeah. I think that's, that's awesome. And, yeah. you know, I know that, you know, you're a true advocate for what we do and, um, and it's nice that you stock your stores with things that do protect people. So, you know, I really appreciate your, your counting on you to also help when you are in these groups and, and when you do talk to these guys to just, you know, that friendly reminder of like, hey, you know, your sunblock, hey, your skin. You know, yeah. yep. wear the arm guards, hey, you know, right. that kind of thing. And that's sort of how it becomes infectious and that's sort of how, yeah. you know, more people and more people are going to get it when they're like, you know, sometimes they'll make fun of themselves. Oh, look, you know, do my tan lines and I look like a scarecrow, whatever. Right. But, you know, they're like that all the time. Like right. there's yeah. some of us that will get maybe a certain color and then after a week or so it'll fade away. These guys, and that's what I think just bothers me so much, it's constant. Right. Yeah. Because they never get a break. Yeah. They'll right. travel. Yeah. To like Florida. They'll travel. So they're yeah. constant. Like they are right. avid athlete. Outside and of And yeah. you know you guys are. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> yep. It's an addiction. And yeah. it's a great addiction. Yeah. But staying protected and, and, and giving your, your skin a chance to heal and be protected is going to be worth it in the long run. So yeah. I'm yeah. sure you've seen yeah. 
you know, a lot. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, have any, like with the cyclers and stuff, I know you're really around it more than me. Do they talk about it at all? Or do they ever talk or mention melanoma? Or did they ever say, hey, what's up with my skin? Or I think that it's become a little bit more common, and I've seen some things with some people that have identified stuff, um, you know, uh, and I, I, I would say that not as common as it should be. Mm. I think what we see is more people coming in and you know we have you know customers that that are out there putting you know over 10,000 miles a year on their bicycles alone and right. and and that's a lot and of time over on a bike. A year, uh, but right. but stuff. but but the the 10,000 miles on their bikes over the course of that year they're all time outside, outside riding exactly. their bike. I mean so yeah. just think about the time of exposure that they've put themselves I through right. and I don't think they identify with that as much as they should be. Right. Um, I think they're more focused on nutrition. Right. I think they're more focused on right. equipment, yes. right. and those are the, the at the forefront of what their thought exactly. process is. So, so it, it really does need to become, um, I think, something more in the mainstream, and and I think that there needs to be more just identification with mm -hmm. with what's going on and how, how to do that. How do you think that could be a help in this industry, in this environment, that we could try to get these athletes? to sort of think of it a little bit more in the forefront. You should probably have dermatologists, I feel yeah. like, maybe doing screenings at some of the events that yeah. you were talking about. Well, that's, uh, that's kind of funny that you say that, but, you know, we, we, we've done different events, whether it be, you know, club events or events that we've sponsored here at the shop that we bring in people to, you know, talk about new products, new technology, what's going on in the, in the, in the cycling industry. And, you know, we've started to think more about how can we do more things, and we've looked at you know, uh, Bringing awareness coaches to that have helped develop with training programs to, um, you know, help develop athletes to take mm -hmm. them to that next step. And, and I think some of the important things is to start looking at, like you mentioned, dermatologists that can come right. in and start talking okay. about things that are important as exactly. well. Because it's great about the nutrition. It's great about new equipment. It's great about how they're going to get faster and shorten their time. But, you know, I think like what's always missed is what about your skin? Right. Yeah. Well, that's never that's, that's never anyone's first no. thought. So that's like how could we change that? How yeah. could you know? Like right. And having your insight to become yeah. here in this world, you know, how could that be brought to mm -hmm. their attention a little bit more? Yeah. Yeah. That and they I realize it is just as important. It needs to become part of right the routine. Now. It is as just as important as you know in decreasing your speed. You know, it is <laughs> as important to strengthen your legs so that you can go faster. You know. Yeah. yeah. I just think it's important to identify it and to, to, to make a conscious effort to, to do something and be proactive about it. And, mm. and I think that that's important. And I think you'll see more and more companies um, starting to develop more products to really help mm. people more aware of it and um, put it in the forefront. I think it's a subtle approach, too. I think with any of us, as, you know, we can all be stubborn yeah. and be like, if it's thrown in your face, yeah. right away people are going to, right. no, no, no. yeah. I don't well, know. Well, then like this, like this, this isn't the primary focus of the... Body glide, it's you know an afterthought, but yeah. it happens to be yeah. SPF. So, right. yeah. and then the chapsticks, yeah. you know, yeah. different. So, you're right, I think that's a sign. It's not the primary goal, but putting it out there, but having somebody like yourself, you know, having us get out there and, and target different areas. Yeah, you know, it's like we'll, you know, um, do you know, we're, we were trying to get to the young ones and do spray tans, you know, right we're in, in, right. We're in the schools and the high schools, you know, uh, Megan's more into the colleges and I'm into the high schools and middle schools, and then targeting, you know, people athletes. like yourself and, and getting into the athlete world and you know, sort of, you know, getting little the pockets of people, yeah, yeah, yeah. then Somehow. eventually it'll. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much yeah. oh, for letting pleasure. us be here. Yeah. Yeah. So Thank you for coming. Yeah. So, so patient. Yeah. <laughs> you know, for the little glitches of, of our Behind first time scenes. tainting. Yeah. 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 Watch out for our next episode. <laughs> <laughs> Bleeps and bloopers. <laughs> Coming up soon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, thank but you so no, much. But it's been a pleasure, and thank you so much for welcoming us into your home here at Competitive Edge. Well, thank you for coming. It's my pleasure. <laughs> thank you. So stay tuned. We're going to have some more information coming up next. Dear 16-year-old me. Dear 16-year-old me. Dear 16-year-old me. Please don't get that perm. It's not as awesome as you think it's going to be. You have to actually practice in order to learn to play guitar. Whiskey tastes even worse on the way up. Dear 16-year-old me, there's going to be a new set of Star Wars movies. Don't watch them. They ruin everything. Dear 16-year-old me, this is where they took the cancer out. It was something called melanoma. It's called malignant melanoma. Malignant melanoma. Malignant.
That's not a very friendly word. You'll be diagnosed when you're 28. 18. 36. 29. 22. It's a tumor that starts in your skin cells, the cells that give your hair and skin color. It's not just skin cancer. Well, it is. Well, it is. But not just the cut it out and it'll be fine kind, unfortunately. It's the kind that you have to catch before it spreads. Because it spreads so fast. So fast. To places like your liver, your lungs, your brain. Yours will be a really rare kind in your left eye. And that's when you'll find out. That melanoma can show up on your tongue, the palms of your hands, and the soles of your feet. Your doctors will tell you you're lucky that you caught it early. Yours will tell you that you need aggressive treatment. I'll have to tell you it might take a year of chemotherapy. And you'll need to do some of the injections yourself. Dear 16-year-old me. You're doing OK. You're strong. But there are some things I want you to know. I wish I'd known. That one bad sunburn before you turn 18 doubles your chances of developing melanoma. That fair skin and red hair means that you're at a higher risk of getting it. As if ginger people didn't have enough problems. That you're at higher risk if you've got more than 50 moles. And if you have a weakened immune system or a family history of skin cancer. I want you to know the outlook is very good if we can catch it early. Welcome back. We just had Todd on from Competitive Edge. Know, he's such a nice guy. Yeah, he had a lot of good tips on how to protect yourself during uh, sporting yes. when we're outside, doing whatever it is, yes. running, biking. Very knowledgeable. I mean, he's definitely in the field he needs to be in. And he's definitely. always so generous. I'm not saying him, but I'm, obviously he has the willpower and, and the powers that be mm -hmm. um, to donate to the Melanoma Education yes. Foundation. So they, he's donated or is been able to get us a bike and oh, gift wow. certificates and you know the triathlon that we've done in August mm -hmm. um, the comedy event that we do yep. near you know Boston in April so um, we're That's very great. very appreciative yeah for, for competitive edge and his support absolutely and speaking of sporting events yes you were talking Munson earlier about the Munson Memorial, Memorial Classic which yet again holds a near and dear place in my heart because it was the first place I ever spoke I they still in talk public, about you so. there. <laughs> Every time I show up, they're like, oh, Megan. <laughs> I'm like, yes. <laughs> but I'm here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, but I'm, I'm very happy to have walked in your No, they're, they're great. They're so. wonderful. But they are. They, and obviously, um, it's a sad story um, of how the whole thing got started. You know, I'll be brief about it. But um, there was a woman, Kelly Waldron mm -hmm. and Kathy Waldron Perry. And remember Jack Perry? He was one yes, of her first he was guests our first on guest, Skin yes. Talk. Yeah. And uh, so it was his wife that yes. died of melanoma. And then literally, I think three months after that, his wife's sister died of breast cancer. So within it's three awful. months, these parents th lost two of their children. I mean, they were in their oh 20s God. and such. So their best friends um, over the past 17 years had formed the, the uh, Muds Memorial Classic in support right. of melanoma awareness and cancer. Yep. So every penny that's raised goes to you know, donate towards you know, melanoma and all you know, that. or wow. cancer. Yeah. Wow. So 17 years. Oh Pretty gosh. crazy. And um, there's over 300 runners. It's a half mar marathon mm -hmm. and then a 5K, which is like three mile, and then like yeah. a, a walk. Nice. So there's people who come from Germany, Kenya. Oh my I gosh. Mean, it's all uh, over. Stat approved. <laughs> so it's wow. a registered, notarized kind of. You know, uh, marathon. It's legit. It's very <laughs> legit. Yeah, that we have people, you know, coming from um, who did the All New York City place. Marathon wow. coming to it. Um, you know, we have a lot of great support. Um, my friend Tony, who owns um, Body Works Unlimited, mm -hmm. is. Um, Providing two lead cars. Oh wow! Um, the Village Mart in Hamden. Yep. They're providing a bunch of pies to give to the runners. Oh nice. Friendly. Because that's course. what you need after you go running. Is uh, a pie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. About Seriously, you, you deserve I'm it. Get that you deserve pie. it if you're running a half marathon. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. And Big Y and right. Hamden Nurseries and oh, there's nice. just so many local support. So it really, really is a great thing. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, so check it We've out. Both been there. Yes. <laughs> um, for future reference, it's usually done. You know, it's every. It's to, it's every second Sunday, I think, of November. Mm -hmm. So check it out for future reference. You can mm -hmm. go to MunsonMemorialClassic.com and find out some details about it. How so. to get involved. Great. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. Now I have to ask, at the beginning of the show, you said you loved your bomb. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, don't you it's love your It's been bum? bothering me all day. <laughs> I've been curious the whole show. Yeah, don't you Explain. love your I like my arms. Don't you love your bum? Ah, uh, bum. <laughs> Not so much. Okay. Other parts. I was maybe. doing, I was actually, first I heard it on the radio, and I'm like, what? You love your what? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I Googled it. Yep. And it's actually an amazing sunblock product. Oh. 
And it's the only thing that has cured my chap lips. Really? It is, like, guaranteed. But it's made... Your I love my bomb on her. I know. I it's don't weird. know <laughs> where they came up with the catchphrase or the name of it. Well, here but we are talking about it, though. But it is something that you can use on your lips. It is something that you could apply on your body. Oh. It is basically not... They have chapstick. They have makeup. They have sunblock. They have every kind of product whatsoever. Wow. It's natural. It's inexpensive. Um, it's sort of been plastered over everywhere. Mm -hmm. Celebrities use it. They've been in many magazines, self magazine, people magazine. I have to try it. So it really is something to check out. You know, again, I like the fact that it's reasonably priced. Right. The most important factor is that it works. Yep. And the catchphrase. Yeah. I, you know, it made me, obviously, it I heard Googled it, now we're talking it, about yeah. it. So it's You're going to probably Google it. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So that's what it's all about. It's that's marketing for you at its finest. <laughs> yes, exactly. So if you like your bum, check it out. <laughs> Excellent. So thank you so much for watching. As you know at home, many continue to lose their lives or their battle with melanoma. But through education and information on early prevention, we can put an end to that. If you'd like an overview of today's show, share your story, have questions, please check us out at skintalk.org. Or you can email us at info at skintalk.org. Thanks for watching.